Every year, 12,500 people go missing in Quebec. Of those, 2,000 leave home on their own, the rest don't. The movie begins with Charles waking up in a black cellophane bag for the dead. After climbing out of it, he realizes that he has found himself in a cell from which there is no way out. Not long before, Charles was a happy single father raising a daughter named Amelie. Having gotten out for a business meeting, he went into a client's house, but the kidnapper attacked him from behind and gave him an injection that caused the man to fall asleep. Charles is now a prisoner of the kidnapper and counts the days, hoping that the police will find him soon. Sometime later, he notices a surveillance camera and provokes the kidnapper to talk to him. The kidnapper does not tolerate Charles's aggression and turns on an irritating sound that can drive the victim to madness. Two weeks later, Charles hears that he is not alone and that there are cameras in the neighborhood that also hold captives. Shortly before, a stranger had kidnapped three other people, Hélène, Sabine, and Alain. Each of them had a job, a family, some worries and plans for the future. Now they are all prisoners who do not understand why and how they ended up in a cell that looks more like a mousetrap. Sabine wakes up bound with a mask on her face, holding her head so that a drop of water falls on her forehead. Alain tries to survive in a cell with bright lights and heaters, while Hélène is strapped to an operating chair. It soon turns out that there are more victims of the kidnapper, and an artist named Brigitte lives in one of the cells. A kidnapper named Kat visits Alain and draws lines on her stomach for surgery. Alain decides not to sit idly by and tears off a metal plate from the bed, after which he breaks the ventilation hole. Sabine also manages to free herself, but the girl still remains in a locked cell. Noticing the captive's actions, the kidnapper attacks Alain and he loses consciousness. A little later, Cot opens the partition between the cells of Brigitte and Charles so that they can talk. The woman has been here for a year and doesn't believe they will be rescued. They are in a mouse trap, and the kidnapper's goals are unknown. To subdue Sabine, the cat uses soporific gas and then hangs the girl by her handcuffed hands. He then visits Brigitte and asks her to gain the trust of the others, otherwise she will be severely punished. Hélène believes her husband will save her since he is a policeman, but the kidnapper crushes the woman's hopes against the cruel reality. He controls the mouse traps, and no one escapes to freedom. At the same time, all the victims are connected, and if they guess the reason for what is happening, he will let them go free. Ending the agonizing ordeal for Alain and Sabin, the kidnapper decides to check on the captive's condition. Sabine's vital signs have dropped, but it turns out she was faking it. Attacking the kidnapper, the girl beats him and tries to escape, but she fails because of the rope she is tied to Cat with. Alain also prepares to meet the kidnapper and waits for the moment to attack him with his fists. The cat lets the cellmates talk amongst themselves for a while to see what's going on. He then electrocutes Ellen and warns the others that their collars are energized. One of them tried to escape, and someone will be held accountable for that. The kidnapper gives his victims ten minutes to determine who will be punished. Afterward, he communicates with Charles and offers to cooperate. The cat assures him that no one can hear them, but in fact, the conversation is on speakerphone. Charles refuses to choose a victim, as a result of which the kidnapper electrocutes Alain. The man shows willpower and accepts the punishment with dignity, declaring that his spirit will not be broken. As it turns out, once the kidnapper almost went to the other world, but miraculously survived. Now he is clearly avenging something, but no one understands how he is connected to him and what bad things he has done in his life. Hélène, Brigitte, and Charles talk to each other but find nothing in common to bring them together. Alain wakes up in a whitewashed torture chamber with his hands and feet bound. A cat decides to break him and tests him with a lack of feeling, leaving the man with only fear. Brigitte reveals that she has been in Charles's cell, and it is likely that this torture has been going on for decades. This puts the captives in a stupor, as their captor is young and unlikely to have been doing this back in 2009. 
Ellen realizes that the writings on the wall of her cell are the names of everyone Cot thinks is responsible for what happened to him. Here she finds her own last name and the names of those in neighboring cells. Sabine, who survived the earthquake in 2010, decides not to give up and makes a noose trap out of improvised means. A while later, the kidnapper opens the cameras so that the five can gather in the common room and talk, learning the reasons for what is happening. Alain is scared and broken after the white cell ordeal, so he says nothing. Meanwhile, the kidnapper urinates on one of the cells, which contains another captive named Paul. The group discusses a plan of action and decide to organize an escape. Once everyone falls asleep, Brigitte returns to the cell and tells the kidnapper on the video camera that they will pretend to be poisoned food to attack him tomorrow. Meanwhile, the cat sneaks into Charles's house to kidnap his daughter, as children are responsible for parents who have made mistakes. The five prisoners try to find a way out of the situation, but do not understand what unites them. The lack of understanding leads to conflicts, but they are interrupted by the cat, who has returned to the bunker. He electrocutes the prisoners and forces them to stand against the wall with their backs against it. Turning on four spotlights, the kidnapper asks them to name the number of light sources. As soon as the wrong answer is given, he electrocutes the captives again, forcing them to say that there are three spotlights. Everyone agrees with his assertion, and only Alain continues to insist, despite the numerous electric shocks. The kidnapper allows the others to rest and eat, while Alain resists and claims the spotlight is four. Soon he too gives up, whereupon Cat brings Amélie into the room to show Charles that he has his daughter. Sabine passes out from poisoning, and the group realizes that they have been ratted out by one of their own. A day later, Sabine goes to the bathroom and finds the tiles falling off, hiding a ventilation shaft. The kidnapper asks Hélène to step out into the hallway, after which he puts the woman to sleep and places her in a glass flask that quickly fills with water. A little later, he orders the others to disperse to their cells and reopens them a couple hours later. Hélène is broken by the water ordeal, and Amélie is chained to a chair and forced to answer uncomfortable questions so that her father won't be electrocuted. The daughter is forced to confess that her father took a man's life, and she is ashamed of him in front of her friends. Brigi confesses that she was the one who turned in the team's plan to Cat so that he would believe in her complete subjugation. As the kidnapper takes Sabine away to torture her with surgery on her spine, Brigi, Hélène, Charles, and Amélie attempt to escape through a ventilation shaft. The cat realizes the fugitives are in a mouse trap and begins to play with them. The four captives realize they are walking in circles and are immediately bullied. Amélie is locked away from her father and Hélène falls victim to an epileptic seizure caused by flashing lights. Realizing that they have lost, the captives get out of the ventilation shaft. The kidnapper informs them that Amélie is no longer alive and that one of them will pay for trying to escape. Continuing to press Alain, the kidnapper electrocutes him and forbids the captives to eat, drink, and sleep. Alain suspects Sabine of betrayal, but the girl shows the tattoo carved on her back as proof that she did not have the strength to escape. Alain resiliently endures all punishments as he was an ambulance driver and decided who to save while failing to help his own wife and wants to fall into eternal sleep. Everyone has secrets, but they continue to keep silent and distrust each other. Noticing that the captives treat Brigitte with distrust, the kidnapper beats the woman in front of the bound Amélie. Two days later, Cat reports that Amélie is alive and allows the captives to eat. Taking Sabine into another room, the kidnapper tortures the girl with a wet towel and water. Alongside this, he hints at what they are here for. Sabine has been kidnapped because she lost documents from a criminal case while working as a paralegal two years ago. A little later, he hints at the reasons for what was happening to Ellen, who worked as a nurse. During her work, she made several medical mistakes that resulted in patients losing their lives. On the wall are the names of those she treated, and one of them is the reason why she is here. Charles asks for his daughter to be released and promises to take the lives of everyone, including himself, if the kidnapper makes a deal.
The four captives try again to understand the reason for what is happening, but find no connection between them. Sabine overhears Brigitte and realizes that she is communicating with Kat in secret from the others. In fact, each of the captives is purposely understating the truth, as they made a deal with their captor in hopes of being rescued. At one point, their conversation is interrupted by Kat rolling Amelie into the room. There is poison in the girl's blood, and in a minute, she will fall into eternal sleep, but the injection saves her. The kidnapper promises Charles's daughter salvation if he strangles Hélène. The man is ready for anything, but at that moment, Alain attacks the kidnapper and takes his life. Alain is no longer ready to think and doubt, so he gives Amélie an injection, but the girl does not get better and has no more than a few hours to live. At the same time, a countdown is activated announcing that the captives have an hour and a half to escape before the explosion. From the disfigured face of the kidnapper, no one realizes who this man is or how he is connected to them. The door is energized and there are bracelets around their necks, so they have to find a way to escape. Realizing that the only way is to move through the walls, the team springs into action. Alain rips out a metal plate and punches through the wall in Brigitte's cell. The next room has a metal floor that cycles power for ten minutes. The team idles and searches for tools before finding a vent that leads to the next room. Brigitte tries to hack into the computer, and Charles realizes that his captor has been tricking him, and he is actually a much smaller prisoner. After sneaking into the next room, the captives break the tools. Alain and Brigitte decide to go back to find the hammer, but only the woman comes back informing them that Alain is no longer alive. She passes it off as an accident, but in fact, Brigitte is the organizer of the kidnapping and is running the system. The kidnapper was a loved one, and Alain paid for taking his life. Hélène guesses that Brigitte is lying to her, and that's when an explosion goes off. A group of prisoners manage to escape from the main building to the garage where the car is parked, but they have no keys and the gate is locked. Brigitte suggests creating a controlled explosion to open the gate, but Hélène notices a man lying in a hole. Charles climbs down and recognizes the captive as his friend Paul. He helps him climb up, but Paul sees Brigitte and suffers a heart attack. Brigitte exposes herself and says that the kidnapper was her son. She made up the whole thing from start to finish, as they are all responsible for her family not being alive. Charles planted a gas cylinder in the fire. Alain decided who should live, Alain gave the wrong injection, and Sabine lost the case, resulting in their guilt not being able to be proven. Now Brigitte manages the collars and makes her watch Paul fall into an eternal sleep. She dreamed of revenge and would only take her son out to punish those responsible. Brigitte has experienced the traps firsthand, so she knows how much her captives will suffer. There seems to be no way out but Amile attacks Brigitte and hits her on the head, after which she strangles her. A short time later, Charles, Amélie, Hélène, and Sabine, who survived the captivity, testify. They all lie to protect and defend the teenager who committed the crime. Amélie is grateful to them for this, but can no longer look at the father who destroyed the happy family, Brigitte. Thanks for watching. We hope like and subscribe. See you soon.